I think it's about time we do an updated rundown on everything you need to know about cloud gaming, from what it is to how it works and who it's for. The space has existed for a few years now, and it's a good time to review where it's at and where it's headed. So let's dive right in and get to it. While I'm sure most of you watching this right now understand what cloud gaming is, for those who aren't, here's a quick rundown. Cloud gaming enables us to play video games on our current devices without the need for additional expensive hardware or gaming consoles. This is done by running the game on a remote server streamed directly to your device. Be it your Android or iOS phone, tablet, PC, laptop, Chromebook, TV, or more. There's even been people who've gotten it to work on things like their smart fridges. Now obviously since it is being streamed to you, it does require a stable internet connection and a decent one at that. It doesn't have to be anything too high end, but it also can't be that slow. And the required speed for you is highly dependent on the resolution you want to stream at. For instance, GeForce Now requires around 15 megabits per second for a 720p 60fps stream, 25 megabits per second for a 1080p 60, and their higher end tiers which stream at 1440p 120fps recommends around 35 and 4K 60fps recommends around 40. But as I just mentioned, speed's only part of the equation, you also need to have a stable connection. I always recommend using a wired ethernet port if available, but if you really need to use Wi-Fi, make sure you're connecting to a 5GHz wireless router because that's going to give you the most stable wireless connection. Now I do want to point out that every other service such as Xbox Cloud Gaming and Amazon Luna have their own speed requirements, but in general, I would say using the guidelines from Nvidia are probably best. And I say that coming from personal experience because you will notice 10 megabits per second on a 1080p stream on a bigger screen. But now that we got the technical requirements out of the way, let's talk about the benefits of cloud gaming and in this video I want to focus on one in particular, and that's accessibility. I can't stress enough that as long as you have a stable connection, you can play the latest AAA games without needing to invest in any new hardware. This topic is more important today than it was 3 years ago when I first started this channel. We're now entering the life cycle of a PS5 and Xbox Series X and S where they're starting to leave the last gen consoles behind. If you find yourself stuck with a PS4 or Xbox One, or even neither, you can find yourself playing the latest in gaming through the cloud. Or maybe you're stuck with a gaming PC that just isn't up to par anymore to keep up with the latest in AAA. Cloud gaming remains a genuine option worth checking out. But hey, it's been 3 years since I made this channel and I'll be the first to tell you that you don't need to give up on local hardware either. Cloud gaming and local hardware can go hand in hand and work amazingly well together. In fact, both GeForce Now and Xbox Cloud Gaming are perfect examples of them working hand in hand with one another. Xbox Cloud Gaming, for instance, requires Game Pass Ultimate, and if you own Game Pass Ultimate, you have access to Game Pass on both gaming PCs and Xbox devices. So if you have an Xbox Series device like I do myself, you can easily launch a game on your local machine, play it on your TV, be it High on Life or Vampire Survivors like I have this past week, and then take it on the go through Xbox Cloud Gaming on your mobile phone. All your progress carries over, and it's all a very seamless experience that's included in the price of entry for Xbox Cloud cloud gaming. GeForce Now on the other hand really benefits the ownership of a gaming PC or a device like the Steam Deck. Not only does save progress carry over for most games as well, but you can also own the games you buy. And that's because GeForce Now actually uses other storefronts to buy and own games so you can just purchase games on Steam and then access it via your gaming PC or Steam Deck. There's a good sense of ownership when using GeForce Now because it's basically not changing how you buy your games already. So if that level of ownership is important to you, GeForce Now is definitely the cloud gaming option to check out. What I'm trying to get at here is that whether you can or can't afford additional hardware, cloud gaming still has a lot to offer. It literally changes the way that you can access your games, and that alone is a game changer. I use cloud gaming all the time alongside my local hardware. But I also know plenty of people who only game via the cloud because they don't have interest in buying local hardware. There should be no us versus them mentality here because at the end of the day, cloud gaming can be for everybody. However, that doesn't mean that it's perfect right now for everybody. It needs to be noted that cloud gaming does face some notable challenges. 
Latency being the one you'll hear most about, and I want to explain what it is and why it happens. Latency refers to the time it takes for a signal to be sent from a device to another device and then back again. To put it into gaming terms, it's the time it takes for you to press a button and then see it happen on screen. It affects the responsiveness and smoothness of the gaming experience you're having. Having high latency would definitely make it feel like a laggy experience. And on the other end, low latency would make it a very responsive one. Now in regards to cloud gaming, latency is an even more important topic than when playing locally because you're connecting to a remote server. Because of this, the latency you experience is going to heavily depend on the distance between you and the remote server itself. I'd argue that GeForce Now, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and Amazon Luna all do a fantastic job of covering the areas they're in, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be the perfect solution for everybody. So it's important that you try out these services and see if they work well for you. Luckily, GeForce Now does have a free tier so you can see the latency between you and the nearest server you're connecting to. Likewise, you can try out Xbox Cloud Gaming if you're in a supported country because Fortnite is entirely free and it doesn't require a subscription to Game Pass Ultimate to try. And while Amazon Luna doesn't have a free channel to try it out, you can get a free trial and they do offer the Prime Gaming channel which is included in your Amazon Prime subscription if you're subscribed to that. One important thing I need to point out though is that while latency is a point of discussion when it comes to cloud gaming, it's absolutely not a deal breaker either. All the gameplay you've seen in the background is running off GeForce Now's 3080 tier. I'm playing with two friends on their gaming PCs and another on their Nintendo Switch, and I have no problem holding my own when it comes to multiplayer gaming. For some people, it'll definitely be a roadblock in the here and now, but for others, it's a complete non-issue. In fact, you may not believe it, but there are times that it can provide a lower latency experience in the cloud than playing on your local console. Nvidia GeForce Now's RTX 3080 tier actually came out on top in a few tests held by Digital Foundry and other tests held by myself. But once again, I can't stress enough that this is going to highly depend on the distance between you and your closest server. So now that you know what cloud gaming is, its benefits that it brings, and one of the biggest obstacles it faces, let me talk about my personal experience using it over the past three years. I definitely consider myself an enthusiast gamer as I do own a gaming PC, a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, and a Steam Deck. But I'm no stranger to cloud gaming either. For the past three years, I've been using Google Stadia, GeForce Now, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and 10 years before that, I was actually using OnLive. That was the first iteration of cloud gaming to be made available to the public. And to be honest with you, it's evolved a ton since then. In fact, it's evolved a ton over just the past three years. And to be very honest with you, I'm now at the point where I probably do most of my gaming on the cloud than on my local hardware. I boot up my PS5 to play exclusive games, sometimes I use the Series X when I want to play locally on my living room TV, and when I'm on my computer, the only time I'm not playing via the cloud is when a game isn't available to stream on there. And the main reason for this is just the matter of convenience. Just like when I switched from physical media to digital downloads, I find myself now switching to the cloud option whenever possible. And for me, a lot of it has to do with managing hard drive space. Both consoles I own are full on memory, and every time a new game comes out, I find myself deleting games to make space for new ones. And this isn't necessarily because I don't want to play those games anymore, but because I have to do it. When it comes to my PC, it's a similar issue. A lot of my space is now dedicated to retaining my videos that I make here on YouTube, but also I have a limited amount of SSD space and I want my games to load fast. GeForce Now for me is my go-to cloud gaming solution and the one I use day to day. And that's thanks to their 3080 tier which lets me stream and take advantage of my high refresh rate monitor. It's by far the lowest latency experience for me and honestly in a lot of games it's hard to tell it's even streaming. And in this day and age where games are no longer being built around a one and done type deal but player retention instead, I find myself going back to games a lot. I'm the type of guy who plays Fortnite, Call of Duty, and Destiny. Those three games are in constant rotation for me, Call of Duty being the only one I can't play via the cloud and sadly the largest in size. But even Destiny 2 on its own is over 100 gigabytes. And this is just talking about games that I play constantly, I'm not talking about all the other games I install and play and new releases that I want to play. Not having to worry about any of that is a big plus for me, and it's one of the reasons why I love cloud gaming so much. If a buddy of mine wants to play Fortnite, I can hop on without having to worry of whether or not it's updated. If another wants to try out some League, then that's fine too because it's on GFN. Just being ready to go is always awesome. 
But what excites me even more is the potential future of where cloud gaming is headed. Even in these past three years, we saw the introduction of the 3080 tier, and that really did convince me that cloud gaming was the future. I can't stress enough, it is simply mind-blowing to me that that level of cloud gaming is available in the here and now. Sure, it has a premium price tag, but I would consider it a very premium product. And like all technology, eventually this is going to be the baseline for cloud gaming and an even more premium experience will exist down the road. We're still very early on in this new technology and we're not even discussing yet how it'll affect game development. This is what excited me most about Stadia, that Google wanted to be the first to really make a cloud-powered game, built entirely from the ground up for the cloud. Sadly, Google gave up on Stadia, before we even got to see a glimpse of what they were working on. But that dream of cloud-built games isn't dead either, because Xbox is already leading the charge. They've already announced a partnership with Kojima, who's helping build one of those cloud-powered games. He's the mind behind games like Metal Gear and Death Stranding. If anybody could make a crazy experience using the cloud, it would be him. Xbox has also announced a publishing division focused on making cloud-native games on top of that. And major publishers like Ubisoft have also announced Project Scaler, which is going to be the future of their game development engine. And while I will discuss more about this in future videos, to put it into simple terms, there's a lot to be excited for in the future when it comes to cloud gaming. It hasn't been a completely smooth ride, after all, Stadia shutdown is definitely discouraging to see. Thankfully, they weren't the only giant company in the space. You have companies such as Microsoft, Nvidia, Tencent, Amazon, and major publishers all playing a role. You have major manufacturers of TVs, such as Samsung and LG building cloud gaming right into their smart TV lineups. And other companies like Logitech and Razer are making handheld devices focused on cloud gaming as well. Cloud gaming isn't a matter of whether or not it's going to take off, it's a matter of time before it does. And no, this isn't about replacing the way you play, it's about giving you another option to play games in a whole new way. Either way, that wraps up what I need to say here. Expect more videos like this where I retread some topics to introduce those who are new to the cloud gaming space to where cloud gaming's at today. If there's anything you would like in particular, such as a breakdown of a current service, let me know down in the comment section below or any other topic you might want me to cover, and I'll consider doing so. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out, and if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. As always, thank you for watching, I hope you have a great day, this has been The Virtual Cloud, giving you the latest and greatest on everything cloud gaming related, and until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.